Well, what do you know? What do you know? I know that I've been trying to wrap my head around how to put this video together. And I'm gonna try to not ramble off too much and get off tr off track here a little bit. But um, this question was asked, you know, the question about um, company versus lease. Um, and it's one of them subjects that's very, very broad. Um, there's no easy way to answer this question um, because it has multiple layers to it. So, um, is it better to go company? Is it better to lease? Um, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, I'm just going to say that now. And I'm also going to say that this is all solely my opinion. Um, you can find multiple opinions out there. Um, there's people that think that leasing is a complete scam. Um, you know, there's people that think if you lease, you know, it's the dumbest thing ever, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it, all, it all depends on what works for you. Um, I did, now I will say, when I first came out over the road, I did go lease right out the gate. Um, now, if you've had, if you've followed me for any length of time, um, you know, you know, so my background is I had 13 years with an equipment rental company where I was, um, in charge of a small fleet of trucks. I was around diesel equipment all the time, been around truck. I understand how trucks, what it takes to keep a truck running. You know, I understand the cost behind things. Um, you know, I understand the business side of things. Um, so for me, it was a no brainer. Um, I had no interest in being a company driver. Um, so I did, I went lease right out the gate. Um, now as for whoever might be watching this, you know, that might not be the right, you know, the right thing to do. Um, when it comes down to it, you kind of got to look yourself in the mirror and, and really process and question yourself. Um, you know, and, and that's, I'll, I'll go over some subjects here and some of this stuff is what you need to look at and kind of consider to yourself. Um, and be honest with yourself because if you put yourself in a position, you can really cost yourself some money. So, um, Anyway, I'll quit rambling about all that and we'll get to this. Um, the The first thing that I have on my list here is I, is I, I kind of wanted to discuss the fact that every industry, no matter what you do, there's levels. Um, you don't ever jump into any, any, any industry and go straight to the top. Um, it, it doesn't work like that. You've got, you've got to learn the different levels and you've got to get there. Um, like I said, I myself, I felt like I had understood a few of the levels already. So, you know, I went straight to the lease level. Um, now, as a new driver, um, if you are brand new, you fresh out of truck driving school, you have zero experience driving a truck, you have zero experience understanding freight lanes. You have zero experience um, of dealing with weather and trip planning and, you know, and scheduling yourself. Um, if you have zero experience in any of that, all right, and then on top of it, you have zero business experience. You have zero experience understanding um, taxes, um, how, how, you know, what is all considered write-offs, um, you know, zero understanding of your per diem days, um, you know, um, setting up an LLC or an S Corp, whatever you decide to do, that's a whole nother, you know, taxes is very complicated. Um, I'll just say that. 
there's there's different ways you can do it um people do it differently um on on how they set their business up but if you have zero experience in any of these things that i'm talking about all right and and, and especially if you have zero experience across the board in all of the things i'm talking about um leasing is not a good idea um i believe that you should go company um get some experience understanding um how to work your clock how to trip plan um how to run efficiently you know um there's multiple things that go into running a truck before you even get to the business side of it so um I will always, always push if you have zero experience in any of these areas, you, you need you need to be a company driver for a little while. You need to get to understand some things. Um, and then you also need to understand that being company and being a lease operator are completely different. The way you run are different. Um, if you're a company driver and you're chasing miles, you, you know, you're looking at, you want them long runs them coast to coast runs. Um, as a lease operator, sometimes them runs ain't what you're looking for, you know? Um, so, but as you get to know things, start doing your research, start finding out what loads pay, you know, um, get to understand, you know, what, what lanes pay better um get to understand what areas pay better um this is all stuff that you can learn as a company driver and then when you decide you know after you've done you know a year or something like that and then maybe you decided then that you want to step off into the lease um at least then you have a little bit of an understanding of how some things work um before you just jump right off in the deep end um so yeah um understand Get a good understanding before you decide to go lease. Get a good understanding of, of how to run your truck, of start doing some research, finding out what uh, are some of the benefits and perks, you know, on the taxes side of it. Um, so with that being said, um, I'll move on to the other thing. Like, and what well, next thing on my list actually is understanding the freight lanes. Get an understanding, start doing your research start jumping on some load boards and stuff and looking at what kind of rates are posted on on freight in different areas so that way you can kind of understand where the hot markets are um and and also understand that those hot markets move a little bit um so drive-in is different than reefer reefer is different than flatbed you know they all have uh seasonal hot markets so um start doing some research start on start getting to know that stuff so um the other thing on my list is um you need to make sure you have a good understanding of the truck um if you've never been around trucks and you're new um understanding the maintenance on your truck what needs to be done at what interview intervals what to look out for um you know these trucks can cost a lot of money and it's not even if you get in a new truck it, not everything is covered under warranty um i got a buddy of mine right now that uh, just went through an episode um he somehow ended up um he swears that he picked it up in a in, at a particular pilot but um he he ended up with contaminated death um he ended up with a tow bill and um uh, a big service bill and it wasn't covered under warranty he had to pay for that out of pocket so um you know you have to be prepared for stuff like that as a lease operator you can't just jump out here and um you know with no money in the bank and think that it's all going to be peaches and cream man it's not like it's just it's not going to be easy um Cause you can come out here and right out the gate have an issue and if you don't have the money to cover it you're you're sunk already so you know um the good part about being a company driver is is you get the time to kind of get an understanding um you also get a chance to kind of stack some money up 
um, which which takes me into my next uh, thing on my list here is um, as a lease operator, you need to be good with money. You need to have a good understanding of your finances. Um, you know, there's people out there that say, oh, I'm good with money. But at the end of the day, are you really like, you know, if you get a four or $5,000 settlement, are you going to think all of a sudden, you know, oh man, I'm rolling in it. I can, I can, I can afford that, that red eye Hellcat, man. Like, you know, that's not how it works because from one week to the next, it's not always like that. You know, um, I always try to tell people like I had, uh, my truck before this one was a Peterbilt and, um, that thing left me stranded in Columbus, Ohio one time. And, uh, it left me stranded a couple other times, but, um, it left me stranded in Columbus, Ohio one time. The DEF system, uh, DPF system, uh, uh, kept throwing faults and stuff like that. Um, that truck was down for a month in the shop in Columbus, Ohio. Now, when it first went down, I put myself in a hotel room. That's the other thing. As a lease operator, the company's not going to pay for that hotel room. You got to pay for that out of pocket. So you got to be prepared for that. Um, the other thing I did was I grabbed a rental car because they'd already told me it was going to be a few days before they could even diagnose it. And I didn't want to just get stuck sitting in a hotel room for multiple days. So, uh, you know, with no way to go eat or anything like that, basically. So I grabbed a rental car and I grabbed me a hotel room. That's all out of pocket. That's my, my, came out of my pocket. Company didn't pay for that. So I sat in that hotel room for five days. Uh, my truck went down on a Sunday. Um, I limped it back to Columbus, Ohio. Fortunately, I didn't have to have a tow truck come get me. Um, I limped it back to Columbus, Ohio. Monday morning, first thing in the morning, I put it in the shop. Friday morning rolls around. They still have no word on my truck. Now they've got it in the shop, but they have not figured out what's going on with it. And I just simply asked them, I said, look, man, like, do y'all think it's gonna be fixed like in the next couple of days? And they just straight told me no. Like, so at that point, I'd already sat in a hotel room for five days. Um, I was done sitting in a hotel room. I took my rental car. I threw my bags in the rental car and I went the 900 miles and I went home. That's all my expense though. That fuel, I, everything. I had to pay for all of that, all right? Now my truck was in the shop for a month. It was like three and a half weeks before they called me and told me that they finally had it fixed. Now I had to pay for a rental car to get back, to go get my truck, all right? So once I got back, now you have to keep in mind, I. It wasn't just the expense of the hotel room, the rental car, you know, that stuff. I had a month of zero income. Zero. I wasn't making any money. My rent was still due or your mortgage, whatever. Car payments still due, you know. Electric still due, you know. Uh, kids still got to eat. Kids still need clothes on their back, you know. <clears throat> There's stuff that you have, personal finances that you still have that stuff doesn't stop just because your truck breaks down so you have to be financially ready for stuff like that you can't just jump into this and think that it's all going to work out because it's not always going to be good there's going to be down times these these trucks are going to break down that that is that's a guarantee that's it's not if it's when they break down so you need to have an understanding of the financial responsibilities behind all of it. So there's, there's, you, you don't have some mega carrier helping you out. You know, if you're, if you're pulling for Schneider or JB Hunt or whoever, you know, whatever company, if, if you're a company driver and you break down, you know, they take care of all that. They make sure you get home. They make sure, you know, or, or they get you in another truck or something like that. They find ways but you don't have to come out of pocket for any of that. That's all on them. So anyway, uh, the next subject I had on my list was downtime and breakdowns. Um, I kind of covered that a little bit. Um, you, like I said, you're gonna have breakdowns. That's part of it. Um, you're gonna have downtime. That's part of it also. So uh, as a lease operator, 
you have to be prepared for that. Um, so that is something to take into consideration before deciding to go lease. Um, the other thing, as a company driver, you get paid vacations. As lease operator, you don't. Um, if you decide to take off as a lease operator, you're going to have zero income that week and you're still going to have a truck payment. So whatever you decide to go do on your vacation, not only are you going to have that expense, but you're going to have zero money coming in the next week. And you still got to pay for that truck. So that's a con of being a lease operator. That's I put that in the pro side of the company driver. Um, the other thing is um, health insurance and retirement. As a company driver, the company usually provides you with that. Now, granted, I you know they probably charge you something for it, but um, you know um, as a lease operator, you don't get those kinds of benefits. Um, I pay for my own health insurance. You know, I have to make my own investments and stuff like that. So um, those those are pros to being a, a company driver. Um, in my opinion, they're cons on the lease operator's side. So um, with that all being said, now, now that I've kind of touched base on, on all the negative things that you need to kind of keep in mind, the pros for being a lease operator, in my opinion, you can run the lanes you want to run. You don't have somebody telling you where to run. Um, if I don't want to run a certain area, I don't run a certain area. Um, it's sim as simple as that. Um, now, granted, there's once in, once in a while that I go into those areas that I don't like running, but generally it's because the load paid good enough that I went that way. As a company driver, it don't. you're going to make the same amount of money no matter what, no matter where you go. So... Um, so that's that's a pro to being a lease operator. You're, you're going to run the lanes you want to run. Um, you're going to run where you want to run. Um, the other pro um, is um, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, but home time. As a lease operator, um, I go home when I want to. Um, if I want to run every, you know, go home every other weekend, which I do, I run every, you know, I go home every other weekend. Um, now the double-edged sword of this, if you're not self-motivated and you're one of them people, it's like, oh, I'm going to go home for two days. And then you get to laid up next to your old lady for, you know, a couple of days. And then you're like, oh man, I just don't want to go back to work. You know, and then two days turns into four days. Guess what? That's going to hurt you. You've got to be self-motivated. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to understand that you can only go home for a certain amount of days. If you go home and sit at home, you know, for a week longer than what you was planning on, that's going to hurt you in the long run. So you've got to be self-motivated. You've got to understand that there's a time to go home and there's a time to work. So, but home time, nobody tells me when I can go home. I don't have to work X amount of days to get so many days off. Um, I, I was never a fan of that. That did not appeal to me. Somebody telling me that I, you know, I've got to run for so long before I can go home. Um, no, if I've got something going on at home, I'm going to go home. So um, that's one of the pros. That's one of the reasons why I went lease. Um, I, I didn't want somebody telling me when I could go home. Um, the other pro, um, I talked about this pretty heavy uh, in the beginning, but I've talked about the negative side of it. Um, is there's a lot of tax breaks. Um, a lot of things that we use day to day um, as a W-2 employee that you can't you can't write that stuff off. But as a lease operator, as you know, as somebody that's self-employed, you can write that stuff off. Um, you know, I, when I buy clothes, when I buy work clothes, I write that stuff off. Um, cell phone bill, I write that off. Uh, internet service, I write it off. Um, anytime I've got a, you know, stuff for the truck, um, I write all that off. Now I'm not out here spending stupid money just so I have some write-offs. So um, that's not very smart. I hear people say that all the time. Ah, oh, well, it's a tax write-off. Well, if you don't need it, don't spend the money on it. 
I, I would rather pay taxes on money that I kept than to spend it on something that I didn't even need. So, um, but there's a lot of tax breaks. There's a lot of things that you can write off as a lease operator. And that's another part of that whole understanding your taxes. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can write off as a lease operator that you can't as a company driver. So, thank you. Sorry about that. They just got me unloaded and I got my paperwork. So, uh, with that being said, anyway, um, I'm right at the end of this video. Um, but those are all things to take into consideration. Um, you know, take a look in a mirror, you know, and, and uh, don't BS yourself. I mean, you know your abilities, you know what you're capable of doing. Um, if you have any doubts, then don't sign a lease. Um, don't sign a lease unless you fully understand what you're getting into and you're comfortable with doing it. Um, there's, there's no reason to, to think less of yourself for being a company driver. There is nothing, there's guys out here, I'll tell you right now, Walmart is starting people out at like a hundred or hundred and ten thousand dollars a year and they've got incredible benefits they've got um i heard i heard their work shift is like five days on two days off or five days on three days off or something i i ain't 100 percent positive but i'll tell you right now that's that's good money for a truck driver um there's nothing wrong with that um there's nothing wrong with doing regional work and, you know, and being home every week if that works for you. Um, leasing a truck and running over the road isn't necessarily for everybody, um, is all I'm saying. There's, like I said, there's nothing wrong with being a company driver and, and putting your time in and retiring with a company or, you know, or if it's just a temporary thing for you, you know, putting your five years in and doing something else, whatever. But there is nothing wrong with being a company driver. Um, I think that people get out here and they get to looking at YouTube and and they see all these lease operators that are, you know, knocking down this much and they're knocking down that much. And, and, and all of a sudden everybody thinks, oh man, I gotta be a lease operator to make money. No, it's not necessarily true. That's not true at all. Um, there's there's money to be made out here whether you decide to go company or lease so that's my thoughts on it um if y'all have made it this far i really really appreciate y'all hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button and like always stay safe keep the rubber side down and shiny side up and i'll catch y'all on the next one